Thanks so much for joining us on the Business Channel today. I must say I'm not usually lucky enough to get to interview celebrities and reality stars on the Business Channel, but you're a lot more than that. Can you talk us through what actually got you into reality TV? Because I know it wasn't just to get famous. Um, well, originally I was on the Martha Stewart Apprentice because I, I actually wanted the job. I was broke and I wanted to be her successor. I wanted to be Martha Stewart's successor. And I was the runner up on that show. And then years later, after I had starting, started writing my first book, Naturally Thin, and was a natural food chef, I was approached to be on The Real Housewives, to which I declined because I thought that it would be a train wreck and I would be on that train wreck. And then I thought about it for about a month and thought this would be a great platform to launch everything that I want to do. And I took a gamble, which was definitely the greatest career gamble I've ever taken. Sure, and I know a lot of your, I mean, you document it well in your reality show, you, you know, you've had a tough life and a lot of setbacks in your career as well, a lot of things that perhaps haven't necessarily worked how you've wanted to. So do you think recognising defeat and starting all over again, which you've done a lot of times, um, is a part of your success, you know, with a lot of your little businesses that you started before? Um, I, I don't really ever think you're starting over. You're just taking that knowledge and experience and moving forward. I have a book called A Place of Yes, and, and there's a chapter that's, called Everything is Your Business. So whether you're uh, a waitress or you know, a, working in construction, you do everything to the best of your ability because you never know where that knowledge is going to take you in the next place. And don't ever think that you're too good for a job. And if, if, you're, if you're going to have that attitude, then just don't do it. So I've pretty much always grabbed on and embraced everything I've done. And all of that experience has gotten me to where I am. All right, let's talk Skinny Girl Margaritas and cocktails, because obviously that's why you're in Australia, because it's launching here. But what was your big moment, your light bulb moment, where you went, Skinny Girl, that's going to work. Cocktails, alcohol, that's going to work. Uh, well, I'm a person who's always been into marketing and kind of naming things and coming up with taglines. And I wanted a cocktail that I could trust. I always wanted to drink a margarita, but they are so sugary and they're caloric and you don't really feel great the next day. And so I kind of came up with a recipe and would order it at a bar. And I don't even know why I came up with the name, but I thought, oh, it's a skinny girl margarita. Mm -hmm. And I mentioned it on my show, The Real Housewives of New York, and it was one of the most popular questions for Bravo, what's in a skinny girl margarita? And then I moved forward to find a partner to take it to market. And I mean, it's really been a, a cocktail fairy, it's been a cocktail fairy tale, honestly. Well, you did strike the jackpot with Beam. I mean, the deal was worth reportedly 100 million. Can you give us a figure on it? I, I mean, I don't like to talk about money. And I did the deal with Beam because I wanted distribution. A lot of people have come to copy and I wanted to be out there with street cred and muscle and really to be able to do it as big and in as high quality a way as possible. And it's been a really great marriage and I'm partners with them. I'm very much involved in, I, I kind of spearhead the marketing and the creative and we have a great relationship and now we're, we're unstoppable. Well, what was it that made your brand so attractive to Beam to want to invest all this money in you? Well, I mean, I'm the first person that ever created a low calorie ready to drink cocktail. So I kind of cracked a code. And I think that people were, the liquor industry was not really focusing on marketing to women. I think in general, a lot of people don't really get the fact that women are the ones who are the purchasers in the yeah. household. So I, I think, and I went and approached several liquor companies with this idea and no one really wanted to do it. And then once I went and did it and it was successful, then, then, then Beam wanted in, they wanted, to, they wanted to hit those women. They wanted to beat the cheetah drinks. They wanted to beat the <laughs> cheetah drinks and they want, I mean, I have a, I have a, direct line to, to women and what they want. And so I think, you know, Beam wanted in on that. Exactly, so why launch in Australia? Because I know in your contract with Beam, you were the one who wanted to launch in Australia. Can you talk us through why? Well, Beam has a huge presence in Australia and Ready to Drink is big in Australia, but I remember in negotiating saying, okay, but in the contract, it has to be a requirement that, and I think it was in this, I think it was in the first 18 months, we have to be launching in Australia in some way. And here we are. It's it was great. I just I knew that this this climate, this culture, that, that this is a big ready to drink culture, and I'm seeing as I'm here, people are very into health and really starting to get more into uh, organic and gluten free, and just it's it's really on trend. And I have a lot of fans here. I mean, I had a lot of requests, and it's frustrating when you when people in other countries see what you're doing and they want it also. So I really wanted to bring it bring it here and it's, it's really being well received. Now I know I'm excited it's here and you've launched your two drinks, your, your, your white cranberry Cosmo and also your, of course, your margarita. But where are your wine brands and your flavored vodkas? Because I know they're in the US. When are they coming to Australia? Um, I know there's a lot of interest in the vodka here. Mm. And we're, we, yeah, we have three different wines. We have 
we have also we have pina colada we have sangria where we have a couple of surprise new we call them meet the new girls they're 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 launching too soon you know the margarita is the classic and the cosmo is sort of the, the flirty girly favorite so I think once these do well, then you'll get everything else. I mean, it just, it's a process. Yeah. And Bethany, what I really love about you is, because I'm a big watcher of your show, so I remember when you met with the Beam team to launch the White Cranberry Cosmo in Aspen, and you said, you know, I don't care that they're investing millions of dollars in me. I want to maintain my brand. That's what's important. It far exceeds alcohol. I love that you have such a clear vision for your brand. How important is this to Skinny Girl? It's very important. And honestly, the the... the relationship that Beam and I have is unprecedented because they had to take a leap of faith in trusting me because I have the whole Skinny Girl brand. Yeah. So whatever else I do with it could affect the cocktail. So they had to trust me that, you know, that I would protect and preserve the brand, yeah. which won't affect the cocktail and vice versa. I am doing all these other things, you know, and it's vice versa also. Yeah. I'm doing all these other things and, and they're nervous that yeah. I'll, you know, that what I'll do. So it's, it's, it's kind of like a nice, Two-way relationship. Two-way relationship, right. Now, can I ask you, because I know a lot of women out there want to know how you juggle having a child and running this entire big business empire. How, how do you think you do it? Um, I, it's about quality versus quantity. I mean, I'm with Bryn all the time. I'm a work-at-home and stay-at-home stay mom. But whenever I'm with her, I'm really, really focused. And I put her first, and I'm, I'm not really social. So I, I work, and I'm with her. It's kind of, that's what it boils down to. And I really do, we, we have great experiences together, and I try to every single day do one quality activity with her and do one for myself. All right, and I also want to ask you, you know, you have this massive empire. We haven't really talked about it all, but you've got shapewear, you've got nutrition bars, you've got books, um, you know, you're a cook, all, all these things, TV host, reality star. What's next for Bethany? Um, I'd say the... The main focus is the talk show. The Bethany talk show launches in August, September, and that will be the hub for everything. There will be ideas, philanthropy, conversations, inspiring women. I mean, that's that will be the hub for everything else. It's it's an amazing platform, and it's what I'm supposed to be doing. And it's really, besides my family, the only focus. I just named a lot of things that you do. You wear a lot of hats, you know, as I said, cook, author, um, TV star. If you could choose one of these things, if you could only have one of these things next to your name, what do you think you'd choose? As far as business? Yeah. The talk show host, no yeah. question about it. Yeah. All right. And look, finally, this is Skinny Girl Margarita. So I always came here wanting a cocktail. Your motto is it's never too early to get a drink. Absolutely. So bottoms it's up. It's not even today. It's yesterday in New York. Exactly. So let's get into it. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. So